Hi guys, uh, it's Moses from Mr. Benetti, the YouTube channel. I'm also one of the two moderators on the Facebook Electrostatic Machines page. Uh, today I'm here uh, because a couple people on the group uh, are building their first sector with Wimhurst machines, also known as a Benetti machine, like this one. Although this one here is a quadruple Bonetti machine, means it has uh, four pairs instead of the usual two pairs. Basically, uh, just four machines connected in parallel. Uh, anyway, starting up a Bonetti machine uh, is different than running a sectored Bonetti, which is known as a Wimhurst. And the reason is because of the metal sectors on a Wimhurst and the fact that the neutralizer uh, strands directly touch a sector. You don't need much voltage buildup on the disc of your Wimhurst in order for the machine to start. You don't need to create a corona between the uh, brushes and the, uh, uh, the neutralizer brushes and the disc because they're physically touching the metal plates that are glued or, or attached somehow to your disc. Uh, and the discs typically always have, uh, plastic discs typically always have some kind of charge difference. So uh, when you crank a sectored or turn on a motorized sectored Wimhurst machine, the machine will usually start right up unless you've cleaned the disc or something and managed to somehow uh, directly short out your disc completely and there's no charge on them, uh, which does happen when you first build a machine every now and then or sometimes when you uh, take it apart for cleaning. A Bonetti machine, uh, uh, in contrast to that, requires a bit of a corona stream to your uh, neutralizer so your neutralizer blades are in, in the case of mine they're uh, fine uh, threads uh, stainless steel threads for, uh, for clothing from Carlson Robotics but you, mu you must have a little gap between uh, the uh, neutralizers and the disc because you're charging the disc by corona stream and you're uh, taking off charge by corona stream uh, and because you need a larger startup voltage you have to often uh, excite the machine, especially when it hasn't been run in a long time, to get it going. And the way you, there are different ways to excite it, and that's what I want to talk about today. If you see, I'll turn the machine on right now, and the machine's on, and it's this has been uh, not working for about six months because I haven't had a chance to play with it. And as you can see, there's nothing coming out because it's dead as a door now. Now, the way you would start this, uh, several ways. One, you would uh, take a uh, charged item with a hot static charge, for instance, and put it opposite a neutralizer, like here, for instance. And usually, if it's dry, uh, it's a pretty dry atmosphere, that's enough to start it. Uh, you could uh, rub a, a, a two-foot length of a thin PVC tube and put it near here, and that will usually start up. Uh, there are other ways too, but uh, the easiest way most people don't know is by using your finger to make friction with your neutralizer, uh, opposite your neutralizer, and the machine will start right up. And to show you that, I'm going to dim the lights and do it. Uh, actually, let me leave the lights on for initial startup. You would uh, press some fingers right around here, which is opposite this neutralizer here. And that will create enough voltage on your disc to get it going very easily, by the way. Uh, so uh, here goes. On this machine, uh, because it's quadruple, sometimes it helps to go in both places here. And you can hear the crackling going already. If I turn the lights off, you can probably see it producing corona now, maybe. Uh, let me get this closer. Okay, and there we got it. We can see that the machine's running. Obviously, the spark length is not large. It's just a, a, a heavily corona spark because I don't have the capacitors installed for this video. But the machine's running, and all I did was make friction uh, opposite a neutralizer with my fingers. Very easy to do, and the machine will, this particular machine will start up uh, for months now without having to restart it. 
some machines, depending on how you build them and so on, you'll have to start every single time you run them, but uh, it's pretty easy. If a machine is well built, it should start at least for several hours on and off. Every time you turn it on and off, it should start right up uh, without having to, unless you let it sit for days without uh, turning it on. Uh, some machines will bleed their charge off in hours, but uh, typically, if I turn this, if I turn any machine off now after I've just started it, it'll have enough charge to start up again on its own. All right, so so now I've turned the machine; it's come to a complete start. I'm just turning the motor on and or cranking it if you had a crank, and there it is. I didn't have to do anything. And like I said, this typical machine will do this for months, for weeks, if not months in many cases. Sometimes even when it's dead and been sitting around, it'll build up a charge for some reason and start as soon as I turn it on. Uh, so if you have capacitors on your machine all the time, uh, fairly large capacitors, don't ever assume uh, because it's a Benetti machine that's been sitting for months that if you turn it on, it's dead. Uh, and get too close if those capacitors uh, can hold a deadly charge. Uh, you'll be sorry. Uh, but that's that's how simple it is to start up this machine. And like I said, you could excite a piece of PVC tube or something similar and hold it next to that. That works as long as your humidity isn't too high. If your humidity is high, no matter how much you get that tube crackling, it'll be difficult or impossible to start a machine using that method. The finger method never fails. So uh, for all those newbies building machines, if you have your neutralizers, working correctly and you have all the other aspects of your machine working correctly it's usually the neutralizers that you have to worry about the most if they're correct and their and their, their uh, continuity is correct and all the other uh, things are correct finger friction opposite a neutralizer just like I did in this video is all you need to start your machine from the first time from dead start to, to zero uh, it should not be a complicated process if you're having startup difficulties and you're not sure uh, what to do about that, you could take off your charge collectors, or you don't even. I, I wouldn't even take the charge collectors off initially if you're not, if it's not working. Turn the lights out like I just did here, and again, make some friction with the disc uh, directly opposite a neutralizer like this one here. And look at all your uh, look at all the gaps between your uh, either your bladed uh, neutralizers or your uh, or your stranded neutralizers. There should be a corona try a pretty heavy corona trying to form between the blades of the neutralizers and the disc. If you don't see that, you got something very wrong. Uh, but you should see that fairly instantly, uh, and and that's how you know if you're on the, in the right direction and you're building one of these machines. But Everybody makes a big deal of starting up these machines, and if they're built properly, they should start extremely easy, even if they're completely dead like this one was today. Uh, it, it's very easy. Again, you're barely touching it, just a little bit of pressure while the disc is spinning right here opposite a neutralizer, and that's usually all it takes. On some machines, it might work better if you do two neutralizers at the same time, uh, like this, or on a single on a single uh, paired machine, you might one up here and one down on the opposite disc for the low. I, I don't do it here because I have to put my fingers between two spinning disc pairs on a machine that could spin at thousands of RPM and rip my fingers off. So it's not the greatest idea. So I do it using my outer, my inner neutralizers. Again, you're touching the disc opposite the neutralizer on the other side. If this was a single pair. I'd also put my hand here. I could put my hand here right now if this was dead and started up by being opposite this one. But again, it's a little bit dangerous because this thing spins really fast, really high torque, and uh, I don't want to lose any fingers. But I have done this. This does work. So it could be any neutralizer. On this machine, it typically likes it here or here and here. So that's it. Uh, again... That's how you start up a, a machine. Again, it's been off for several minutes while I've been talking, and here we go, we'll turn it on. And you can hear it crackling away. I turn the lights off. You can see that it's working just fine.
So I hope that was informative to some of the people who are just trying to get their first uh, sector with Swimhurst or Benetti machine working. Um, I hope that uh, helps out a lot. Uh, I'll try to make some more videos on these things and uh, maybe uh, some videos on electrically starting these machines, which can be done. Uh, a lot of work when you can just do it with a finger like I showed you, but uh, it's, it's pretty fun to do if you can pull it off. Till next time, have a great day.